Hello, welcome to the second part of the information-centric networking. In this video, I will introduce content-centric networking, a concrete implementation of the information-centric networking. So the basic idea of content-centric networking is, um, as in ICN, making the content the central element of the networking operations. So in this figure, you see the difference of the CCN and the common OSI layer model. Instead of IP, which depicts the source and destination of a packet in OSI model, it is the chunks of explicitly named content in ICN and CCN. And by that, the content becomes the universal agreement between every network element. Uh, it is decoupled from the host and therefore in CCN, the source of desired content is no longer relevant. Furthermore, the security and the strategy layers are introduced on top and below of the content chunk layer. And the security layer is to secure the data, while the strategy layer describes how the content is uh, distributed. And this introduced layer can be on top of the IP layer, but it can be also implemented directly on top of the data link layer. So now let's uh, discuss the main components of the CCN. The first one is the naming content or a named data object. This is the main abstraction of the CCN. All data such as uh, web pages, documents, videos, etc. is a naming content or named data object. Uh, this naming content is independent of the location storage method and therefore its identity is kept regardless of the location, storage, and the communication method. It also means that any two copies of the content uh, should be equivalent for any purpose. The naming scheme is often designed to have a human readable form, uh, which makes it possible for users to manually type in the names and to some extent it expresses the relation between a name and what user wants to get. Um, the hierarchical scheme has a structure similar to the current URL where the hierarchy is rooted in a publisher prefix. It enables aggregation of routing information and hence improving the scalability of the routing system. So here are the two packet types in CCN and there are only two and packet types which is the interest and the data, the content data. The users um, express their demands for content by sending out the interest of the outgoing interfaces. The interest contains the name of the desired content, of course, and additionally it is accompanied uh, with a selection information such as the scope within the network where the data should come from or the certain um, filter information. In response to the interest, the data packets are sent to the user on the same path the interest uh, traverses. The data contains the data across and the content name which should match the content name in the interest. Additionally, it contains the signature and the signed information for the security purpose. So now let's consider the uh, principle of operation in CCN. So if the party one or representing user would like to request a content, it uh, send the interest to its neighbors, which is the node A. Uh, this node A will uh, look up in its the content store to see if it has a, the, a, a matching uh, content. If there's a matching content, that matches the interest, it will send back uh, the uh, content to the party one. But if not, then it forward the interest further to the uh, next node, the node B in this case. And node B uh, 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 try to look up for the content as well in its content store. And if uh, there's no matching content, it uh, sends the interest further. And if uh, the party 2 in this case has the matching content, it will send back, uh, it will uh, respond with the data, the matching data. And uh, yeah, uh, via the same path, 
whether interest tavas. So in this case, the data win tavas, the node B, node A, and back to the party one. And uh, at each intermediate node, like node B and node A, the data will be cached in the content store. So that is the basic uh, principle of operation in CCN. And then uh, one um, important thing here is that the interest and its corresponding data always take the same but reverse path in the network. So, um, so here in this figure, you see um, the structure of the CCN node. There are three main components in the CCN node. First one, the first one is the content store, the pending interest table, the forwarding information base. That is the three main um, components. And of course, these are the faces corresponding to the outgoing link of um, the node. So now we will discuss each component in detail. So uh, the content store. The content store is a simply a buffer memory which is used to cache the content. So if the request the data is in the content store, the node can immediately send the data back to the um, to the, the 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 user who requests the content, and it can act as a content provider. Um, this one um, is uh, similar to the caching in current IP network and the advantage is of course that it reduces the overall bandwidth usage and the latency but um, the challenge here is how to cache um, effectively to increase the heap probability and of course we can't cache all content because the lack um, of the uh, memory but we have, so that's why we need a efficient strategy to catch um, the content effectively. Another component is the pending interest table. It keeps track of the received interest and it tries to, uh, the, to map the interest to network interface where the corresponding requests have to have been received from. It also enables request aggregation when a node receives the data of interest, the interest entry um, will be removed. That means that the interest has been satisfied and it doesn't have to forward the interest further. If an interest is not responded uh, for a certain time, then the interest can be timed out and uh, the pending interest table will delete this interest. If the user still wants to um, and to, to get the content, it has to re-send uh, the interest. Um, the third uh, component of the CCN node is the forwarding information base, also called a FIP table, which is similar to the routing table in IP router. It stores the information on which faces the interest should be forwarded towards the content source. The FIP can be built um, using the routing protocols similar to the, those in the current internet. So now let's uh, talk about the routing in CCN. Routing in CCN is claimed to be similar to routing schemes in IP networks because they both rely on longest prefix matching lookup and also the FIP table in CCN and the IP routing table are closely related. The only difference is that the FIP allows multiple outgoing interfaces or faces, while in IP routing um, it is allowed only one outgoing port. A forwarding to multiple interfaces in IP network will lead to a loop in the topology. But in, con in contrast, this is not a problem in CCN, since neither interest nor data packets can be looped. Uh, for example, if two nodes in the topology announce the same prefix in IP network, this would mean that via both nodes, every host with uh, such a prefix can be reached. Therefore, the forwarding mechanism has to pick only one node. So that means there's only one outgoing interface in IP network. But in CCN, such two nodes may not announce the reachability to the whole content, but maybe just a subset of the content 
and therefore both nodes have to be queried. So let's go to the uh, last issue in CCN is the security. In the common internet uh, architecture, security of content is often provided by authentication of the host and securing the communication channel over which the content is transferred. But in CCN, the content is decoupled from its origin and it doesn't matter by which means a user gets it. Therefore, uh, authenticity and integrity of the content have to be possible to be checked just by the information provided in data. Thus, a digital signature mechanism was introduced. The, one of the approaches is that the publishers of the content maintain public and private key pairs to sign data packets. However, this mechanism doesn't provide trusted key yet, and as a solution, a public key infrastructure is suggested, and this can be established via different means uh, such as a PKI like a certificate chain based on the naming hierarchy or information provided by a friend. So uh, to conclude, in this lecture um, you have learned about the ICN which is a new networking architecture that changes the current networking paradigm from host-centric to information-centric networking and you also get to know a concrete implementation of ICN, which is the CCN content centric networking. You know the main components of CCN um, and CCN nodes. And yeah, we uh, also um, have learned that the ICN or CCN is expected to solve some problems in today's internet regarding the scalability, mobility, and security. So here are some references and thank you very much for listening and this is now the time for quiz.